2012. Uh, his research interests are in documentary as an ideological practice and how it relates to other social practices that shape individual and group identity. He has made films in Africa, in India, in Malaysia, in Laos, in Australia. His most recent film, The Last Days of Sunlight, tells the story of the struggles of Lama Lama elder Sunlight Basini in regaining ownership of his community's land on East Cape. Yo. I'd like to uh, invite uh, the Victorian Multicultural Commissioner Rosario Zaro and retired Brigadier VK Atri to please join me presenting the SCALF Award to Simon Wilmot. Thank you. I'm very uh, honoured to get this award. Thank you for Victoria for, um, uh, uh, I think, nominating me. Is that right? Thank you very much. Uh, I really appreciate that. Um, we are, you know, of course, any achievement is on the shoulders of giants, uh, those who precede us. And uh, fortunately, um, participating in uh, Melbourne film community and learning a lot about film from um, other people who preceded me, particularly in the Ruskin course that, that is the antecedent to this deacon course, like Brian McKenzie, um, was really important in, in helping me understand how documentary can play a role in addressing, um, and perhaps addressing as a corrective to processes that marginalise people. And I think marginalisation is uh, um, an outcome of narrative and stories that are told and so telling other stories is, to correct that is a, a kind of interesting thing to do. That's what I'm kind of very interested in, is, is, is recasting stories and tweaking stories. Um, that little excerpt I, I chose to show was because um, filmmaking, of course, is a practice that also perpetuates discrimination and marginalisation because it, it's a major form of storytelling which produces marginalisation. However, I don't think any audience ever goes to see a film to see themselves reflected in that film. I think that's a kind of secondary outcome to storytelling. In China, for instance, at the moment, the Chinese film industry is kind of a bit perplexed because the Chinese audience is favouring watching Western films. Now, you wouldn't necessarily say that Chinese were marginalised in, in China, but, you know, so the motivators to see stories are something else. But I think that the process of why how marginalisation isn't just one of, um, of who is represented and who's not on the screen, but it's about other kind of embedded practices in the way we talk about the world. And a really bad way that photography has spoken about the world, particularly in the context of anthropology and other perhaps um, sober discourses um, that have gone on, has been um, to make people anonymous. 
And um, we see that, say, the, the, the way um, uh, refugees are currently attempted to be kept out of the media by the government because it's easier to vilify someone, it's easier to have prejudices against someone when they're anonymous. And it's only when we can name them that we know who they are. So what was really important and really important part of this story in, in this film and the key part, the, the key role of this scene was that was for us to learn who those people in the photographs were, what were their names or what are their stories. Um, and one of, this kind of problem we have of, of adequately naming people, which is such a process of marginalising people, can be seen in this, this extraordinary exhibition that's currently on at the National um, Gallery of Victoria, the Green Potter Gallery, called um, Colony, which looks at kind of an early stage of Australian settlement. And despite all the good intentions of people involved in that, Aboriginal people still exist in that, in that story anonymously. And not a lot of effort is often even made by um, art professionals and even scientists working, say, with an anthropology, but other sciences, sciences as well, to actually adequately name people. Who are these people who produce knowledge, who contribute, who are in photographs? And, and so um, what I'm very interested in, in, in relation to Indigenous cultures and their role and in our story is um, to address their anonymity and to address the ongoing anonymity that Indigenous people experience and suffer. And the fact that even here on the Wadjeri land, um, here in this place, that none of us know the name of what this place is, we call it Gardens Creek, but it's actually called Kuntu, Kuntu Gun. Um, and nor do we use the word um, Wamanjeka, which is to say hello in the language of this place traditionally. So, Wamanjeka, thank you very much.